One fascinating fact from the latest census is how Australia's Indigenous population is growing, at least statistically, compared to the rest of the population. From 2016 to 2021, the national population grew 9%, but the Indigenous population grew 16%, nearly double. Demographers say more people are choosing to identify as Aboriginal, but with this comes controversy, like the one that's erupted, erupted in one of the nation's most prestigious universities. At the University of Sydney, there has been doubt raised, including by Aboriginal groups, over the number of students claiming to be Indigenous. So the uni's proposed solution is to no longer accept simple statutory declarations from students about their Indigenous heritage. Instead, it will also demand a statement from an Aboriginal organisation or community group declaring the student is accepted as part of an Indigenous community. Earlier, I spoke with Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council CEO Nathan Moran and asked him what advantage there might be for students to identify as Indigenous. Thanks for having us, firstly, Chris. Yes, this issue of Aboriginality comes down to availability for people who are Aboriginal or confirmed as Aboriginal to access benefits like scholarships to attend university, to receive assistance at university that could be the form of tutoring, mentoring and support that's generally targeted for Aboriginal people. And, yeah, certainly Sydney University, as the local university, has these types of access programs and were uh, using self-identification as one of the means to um, prove Aboriginality. And you would support these programs, but do you have any evidence that people are actually gaming the system and getting access to these programs who are not Indigenous? Correct. So our Land Council is aware, and certainly there are now sites out there in public uh, that are exposing individuals who claim Aboriginality but have no Aboriginal ancestry. And in particular, some of these people uh, are receiving massive benefits, be it identified jobs, benefits of assistance for scholarships, uh, in some cases even trading as Aboriginal, when they don't have any Aboriginal ancestry, for whatever reason they've chosen to identify as Aboriginal, but really it comes down to this ability for people to self-identify must be addressed. Uh, we so, are aware of people at Sydney University who, who can't pass the test and or are unable to be, be provided confirmation of Aboriginality. We've been working sensitively, openly, honourably with the Sydney University for them to end self-identification as a means to qualify. So Sydney University, like other universities and other, other organisations, is going to say from now on you, it's not good enough just to claim or assert your Indigenous heritage. You need to provide a statement from an Indigenous group or an Aboriginal organisation saying you are part of that community. Do you believe that that will fix the problem? Well, it'll certainly address efficiency, effective use of public monies that's identified for Aboriginal people. And I say this as someone who works in the local land council for the last now nine years, but certainly after decades of working in the Aboriginal community, that our communities have been calling for action for over 20 years. When becoming aware in the 1990s of the difference in birth rates versus population, we have been calling for this to be addressed, to verify the family or descent or the individual, the parent or parents from whom you claim your Aboriginality and the last one is the most important critical, is about quality assurance. That is, who is the community who can verify or affirm this identity? And that is the quality assurance mechanisms within the current legislation that we're hoping can be applied that we believe should always have been applied. It's just yeah, so it sad the accepted, that stat uh, have been allowed. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the accepted standard nationwide, as you say, so it seems uh, just common sense that universities might adopt the standard as well. But this is a bigger problem than just universities, isn't it, Nathan? Because the latest census shows a, a oh. dramatic increase in the number of people in Australia identifying as Indigenous. Now, in many ways, this could be a good thing, people taking more pride in their heritage. Perhaps it's driven also by people studying more closely their family tree or even getting DNA testing. But are you concerned that there are other elements at play here? Yeah, I could give the example, Chris, that in 2016, our Land Council was aware that 
we had the first person removed from the New South Wales Land Rights Act was an employee in an identified job of the New South Wales government. The first individual to be removed from the New South Wales Land Rights Act's membership role due to the fact that she'd lodged a fraudulent membership application. She'd been proven by the Registrar of the Aboriginal Land Rights Act to have submitted fraudulent application for membership. So in 2016, we're aware that that had occurred, but also that the New South Wales government was paying tenant advice advocacy services to assist Aboriginal identified housing, to which the Greater Sydney Tenant Advice Service was able to confirm in delivering support to a public housing tenant in an Aboriginal home, those tenants confessed they ticked a box to receive housing. So we're aware of rampant fraud identified fraud, proven fraud, certainly coming to light since 2016 when we started our Aboriginality forums. So we're aware it's a, it's a factual proven thing that people are commencing, committing fraud to receive benefits that's not for them. They are not Aboriginal. And now, as I said, there are now people who trade as corporate businesses and or receiving commercial benefits, stating, claiming that they're Aboriginal when indeed there is public evidence available to prove they don't have one Aboriginal ancestor. So how will this play out, this very issue play out when it comes to an Indigenous voice to Parliament? Who gets a say on the membership of that? Well, yeah, it's a great link. I think, Chris, it's important that we make sure we qualify who's speaking as Aboriginal, is known as Aboriginal, meets the requirements of the law. For our people, an everyday issue that we hope we can address by adopting the law, following the law and closing the door on stat decks or self-identification as a way to bypass the law. Nathan, it's a tough issue. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for helping us. And it's not the last you'll hear about that issue, especially as the debate continues about an Indigenous voice to Parliament.